Live in Shadowrun Studios, it's the Talkie Box Podcast, when it absolutely, positively has to be there overnight. Mm-hmm. You don't need a Talkie Box for that, but... <laughs> Well, we, uh, we're on a virtual medium. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, information is nearly transferred instantaneous. Or overnight. So we're yeah. quicker than Or overnight. like <laughs> within the night, at yeah. least. So, I am in excruciating pain right now. Is that why you've got a giant cup of hot tea? Yes, that's exactly why. I went uh, to the dentist today. I've been going to the dentist kind of regularly the past few weeks. Now that you're paying and, for it. Yeah. And uh, most have been working on my front teeth. Totally fine. But they do a back tooth, and it hurts like a son of a bitch. What'd they do? Just like a filling. But like, how they had to like hold my mouth open to get, you know, all the way to the back of that tooth uh, and everything, yeah. you know? So now my jaw is in my Sore and upper, yeah. <laughs> everything is aching. Was there like some kind of a device, like a, like Mm-mm. a jaw separator? No, he just put like had his entire arms in there, it felt oh, like. Oh, he just <laughs> went in there manually. Yeah. Didn't use any kind of tech. So it's the elbow. I just pictured some kind of medieval device that like goes in there and it's like got a jack on the side. <laughs> and, like, it's like this crank thing. Ah, yeah, just that's slowly. enough. That's enough. Yeah, <laughs> and, like, ah! uh, yeah and it's, it's just a flapping tongue. Eventually. <laughs> so I, I I went to the library to actually upload an, you know one of our episodes and like twenty minutes in I was like I can't I gotta go home like this is awful. Oh, wow. and so I came home took like six hundred milligrams of ibuprofen it still hurts. Tried to take a nap, couldn't. Took a shower. That didn't really help that much. Was it just sore muscle? It's, I guess. Like, it's just... Like, it's not the tooth itself. It's not the nerve mm-hmm. or anything. It's just, like, everything in, in, like, this area right here is just excruciating. Yeah. Mouth pain sucks. Yeah. So, I got this. This is probably too hot to drink. I was right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Immediately regretted your decision. I did. <laughs> yeah. I burnt my tongue. <laughs> um... <clears throat> yeah, I'm Dave, the host of Talkie Box, uh, of the Talkie Box podcast. We got Jason with us as uh, hey. somewhat usual. Yeah, um, the most unusual usual guest. Yeah, we got <laughs> Kate, who's hey. getting more usual, and then uh, Scott, first time on the show. Hey Scott, hey. Woo. <laughs> now first timer. Uh, this being your first time, now you have to tell us your entire life story. Well, it's going to be pretty uh, short and simple. All right, let's get to that then. <laughs> My name's Scott Watson, 39 years old. Mm-hmm. Born in Atlanta, raised in Cherokee County, and I uh, still live in Cherokee County. It's still hot. It is. Sorry, go I'm ahead. sure it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, grew up in restaurants. That's what I do for a living now. Yeah. And, grew up uh, in a booth. In a booth? You just grew up in a booth like you just like, a little like, baby. Little like, baby Scott. Like in mom a booth just set me down in a booth. Yeah. No, that probably started a little late, later than that. Oh, okay. You know, teenage years is yeah. when I got into restaurants. But, um, yeah, yeah, it's... That's pretty much the gist of it. Big old nerd geek. Yeah. Like my games. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he and my hobbies. Yeah, he's, he's a LARPer. Mm-hmm. That's uh, that's where I met him. That's where you met him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Kate met him here. You also so uh, I did. just now. <laughs> just now you have a, a family business as well. Like, weren't you and your mom aren't you entrepreneurs? Tried that. It was uh, difficult uh, working with fam, but um, yeah, making like bobble birds that you can set out in your yard mm-hmm. and they. Bobbled and spun around the wind, but hand handcrafted, right? Yeah, and like, hand painted, and like it's still a sustaining business. Uh, it's just what your your mom and your uncle, I That's think, right. are, are running it mm-hmm. currently. But and they make an okay living at it. That's cool. But um, but just yeah. taking like an idea, crafting something by hand, you mm-hmm. know, and then and then selling it to different places, like that's. It's the American dream, just like yeah. Talkie Box. Yeah, yeah. Talkie Box definitely the American dream. <laughs> yeah, it's everybody's dream because we are American and we are dreaming. Yeah, <laughs> we had a Canadian at one point though. So I don't know yeah. how that affected the dream. Could be a Canadian dream, you know, same thing. The North American dream. There you go. Yeah. There North, you go. American North American dream. continental dream. Yeah, <laughs> I really want to drink this tea, and I know it's too hot. Uh, you know, mm. a couple ice cubes. I'd have to get up and go get them. That's true. That'd be dead. We don't have Could servants do to do that for us. Yeah. <laughs> or interns. And then, who are those people? <laughs> Why are, are they staring people? at me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's just our live studio audience. Yeah. Ah. They're very quiet. They don't yeah. laugh anywhere. They never applaud. Incredibly funny. Now days. I want everyone to check under your chairs. <laughs> 
That's where the bottom That's of the chair is. That's where the dirty floor is. <laughs> Congratulations, everybody. You want a piece of dirty floor. You can't take that with you. Don't take it with you. <laughs> if you want to just kind of sweep it up into your Buff purse it or whatever, it would be cool. Yeah, some kind of charge for it, you know. Yeah. Start working on your American dream. <laughs> yeah. So, what's up? How was your week? Uh, it's pretty good. I got a new job. Yeah? Yeah. A day job, mm. so I can't do all of this uh, making fun of of you and Justin and everybody else. <laughs> everybody else who has jobs, Scott. Everybody else yeah. that has to work for a living. Because mm-hmm. now you're doing that. And now I'm doing it again. What are you doing? Uh, you know, a little bit of cooking, mm-hmm. a little bit of cooking, a little bit of cleaning. Well, a little bit of cooking, a whole lot of cleaning. Oh, <laughs> yeah. that sounds less fun. Yeah, the other way around. Yeah, but I'm good at it. Good at cleaning. Good at cleaning. Yeah, mm-hmm. I've always been. What kind of place you working at? Uh, it's a sports bar. All right. Sports uh, on TVs on the. Yeah, on the tons of TVs. TVs in the boots. Oh, okay. Uh, like just TVs all over the place. Everybody gets a remote. Everybody gets a TV. You get a remote. You get a remote. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No one knows how to use the remotes. Yeah, can you change my channel for me? <laughs> yeah, with the remote in their hand, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds great. Yeah. Uh, Scott, what you been up to? Working? Working. Kate, working? Oh, yeah. Awesome. You, uh, <laughs> you see anything, any good movies recently? Uh, I went and saw Star Wars. Saw the new Star Wars. No, he, uh, went and saw Star Wars. A few weeks ago. He wanted yeah. me to go with him, mm-hmm. but I you think I was doing Talkie Box, actually. Yeah. I enjoyed it. I liked it, too. It wasn't, uh... Empire Strikes Back, which is my favorite, mm-hmm. but it definitely was not a Phantom Menace, which was my least favorite. Right. So. Yeah. But yeah, I really enjoyed it too. Uh, glad I saw it in the theater instead of just waiting for it to come out. Yeah. You know, on DVD. I, I I guess, like, I'm not a huge hardcore Star Wars fan. Like, I like Star Wars, just mm-hmm. you know, just fine. But you know, I, I know a lot of people who are really into Star Wars, and they did not like this movie. Um, because they're like, oh, it's not, it's not a real Star Wars movie, and oh, like it's in space. It's got Luke Skywalker. That's pretty much Star Wars right and there, right? Wars, yeah, going on. There's a war <laughs> happening. <laughs> I, I feel like it might have been an overcompensation because uh, I felt like the the last one everybody compared to uh, New Hope, yeah. right? And they were like, it's it's almost just like a you know it's this re-skinned. this amount of time goes by and everything recycles itself. The Force. And so because of that, excuse me, pardon me, everybody, mm-hmm. because of that feedback, uh, they decided to like, all right, well, let's, let's try and get a little bit away from mm-hmm. that, that stereotype story. And so now everybody I hear is complaining that it got too far off page yeah. from what <laughs> they were anticipating. So I don't know. It's really hard to please everybody. It is. Yeah, you can't, yeah, you can't please everybody, but even... This one had some similarities to Empire Strikes Back. Mm. You know, the bad guys coming in and assaulting this uh, rebel base and just totally annihilating it while they're trying to jump ship to get out. Uh, Spoilers. Spoilers. Oh, sorry. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, it was... Things happened. Things happened, and they were similar. (laughs) So you're saying there's like a rebellion... And there's like an empire, right? <laughs> and you're saying that they were fighting in this movie? That, that, that definitely happened. Did you say it happened in the stars and they were in a war? Yes. Sounds like Star Wars. Definitely. Yeah. Sounds like Star Wars. Mm-hmm. And that's why I enjoyed it. You know, and now the microphone's good. fucked up again. I didn't do it. Did you fix it? Do you yep. need to yeah. again? Oh, no. Was, not it. So you just gotta like be real loud at it. I guess. I don't know what the deal is. Okay. Nobody's kicking it, right? Yeah. No? No. no? I don't mm-hmm. think so. I don't have a cord near me. My feet are on the chair. Good. Yeah. Oh, okay. So no telling how long that was uh, not working. <laughs> we were, I mean, it was coming through just very, very softly. I don't know what the deal is. Well, yeah, they just, can turn up their volume yeah. from this second to well, that hopefully second. Hopefully, you can do that in post and just blow that section up. Yeah. More work for me. More work for you. Yeah. <laughs> American dream. <laughs> More work for the same pay. That's yeah, the American reality. Oh, yeah. So, so I've been playing a lot of uh, free to play. MMORPGs that mm-hmm. are uh, paid content. Like, if you want to get anywhere, you know, we discussed this. Free to play, with, pay to win kind right. of thing. Yeah. Or, or at least pay to, like, for the advancement <clears throat> and stuff like that. Like, the free to play is always the most basic game, and you yeah. get bored with it after about a month or so. And then it's to try and lure you in to, 
and if you enjoy it, mm -hmm. you know, start paying for the the more content. Mm -hmm. um, now, I of course am way too cheap for that. Right. So I play until I get to that point, and then I just sort of get bored and I move on to the next thing. Mm -hmm. But I feel like if they really wanted to get people like me to stay on their game, they would develop a way for you to buy the content through in-game uh, commercialization. Right. Like get some sponsors or something. I've never, I've seen sponsorship in movies. I've mm. seen sponsorship in television shows where, you know, like Acura sponsors the show. So like every major car and every major scene is an Acura kind of thing. Yeah. Like, you know, that sort of thing. So why don't they do that in video games? You know, why? I mean, I've seen that in, not necessarily what you're saying, but like sort of in, in uh, mobile games on your phone and stuff, where you play a level and it shows you an ad. And you play another that's level and it shows you it. an ad. Yeah. And that that's okay. how they keep it. And then you can cheaper. pay to get rid or, of the ads. Yeah. If you just want to play the game and blah, yeah. blah, blah. But for consoles or, or PC gaming stuff, no, I haven't really seen that. But I was I was just thinking that, you know, with the MMORPGs and stuff like that, you know, they're constantly updating mm -hmm. their uh, their material. Yeah. And so, like, if they got some kind of a corporate sponsorship, they could actually develop a quest line or something involving mm -hmm. that corporate sponsorship. And then, you know, you could you could go from there. Yeah. I just feel like if if Pepsi got involved into a game or something along those lines where just like as you were walking down the streets, all of the advertisements were fake, you know, in the mm -hmm. bulletin boards and the skyscrapers, wherever you would normally see an advertisement, you know, mm -hmm. and generally they have to put a filler fake kind of ad right. in there. But if you actually got corporate sponsor, you'd wipe that and then skin it with a real yeah. ad. Mm -hmm. So if you're in this virtual world, now you're still getting exposed to these real world uh, things. And, mm -hmm. I, and I feel like that would be a way to to further like free to play games. Yeah. Yeah. The free to play game makes money off the sponsorship, not so much the player right. anymore. And so then it's just about keeping your numbers up. Yeah. Like you want as many players as possible to expose themselves to this. You don't want commercial. anybody exposing themselves. <laughs> well, <laughs> depending on the MMO. As long as it's consensual. Yeah. 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 Like, you got to advertise in Europe too. Mm. I'm pretty sure <laughs> it's completely okay over there. I saw a bulletin board uh, in Europe. I wasn't in Europe. It was a photo that someone took. Okay. Because I'm not that cool. Right. But it was like, you know, a lady just bare-breasted with a plate of various cheeses. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of like a got milk commercial <laughs> in Europe, but it was like, you know, care for some cheese, but you're just staring at breasts. You're like, those are really nice breasts. And they're selling cheese. So every male that went by was like, hey, there's boobs. Oh, she's selling some cheese. <laughs> I want some of that cheese. If I get and, that cheese, maybe I'll get those boobs. <laughs> maybe it's boob cheese. I mean, I feel, well, every cheese is boob cheese, really. Okay, but uh, <laughs> human boob cheese. Weird. <laughs> I, know. I take it to I mean, is it really weird, time. though? Like, I think it's more weird we drink milk from other species and not from our own. Like, yeah. It's okay for our children, but once you get to an, be like, I think it's like two or three. It's that's like okay, you're supposed to technically yeah, not really. Yeah, you got to move over anymore. to the cow, or the goat, or well, I'm you know, sure it gets awkward yeah. for the lady when the child starts speaking. Well, maybe you need to come off the the yeah. move there. I've heard of people doing that though. My mom had a friend whose friend, or I'm sorry, my mom had a friend who breastfed her kid till he was like six. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. that kid was a pansy. I don't know if there was any correlation there. Between being a titty baby and being a pansy, but... <laughs> there is. I believe there is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the kid, hey mom, can I... But I'm not know, talking can, about can staying on the teat that <laughs> nope. long. I'm just saying, like, you know, if if there were a market for it, like, you know, like wet nurses. You know, how ladies who, who mm. don't want to breastfeed, uh, they'll hire a wet nurse that comes in and breastfeeds and they just constantly lactate because they constantly have children on their tits yeah, yeah. Ah. so it, the milk never dries up mm. um and you know if if there were a market 
for human breast milk, I just wonder like what, what kind of pay you would get. Because obviously you don't have to pay a dairy cow. They just, you put them into a little little stockade right. and you hook a bunch of tubes up to them and you you know you pet them on the head and you feed them some grain and then that's that's yeah. done. Well, they're good to go. Yeah. Uh, no. I'm yeah. pretty sure I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure you can actually sell your breast milk. You think so? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's a thing. Right. To like women who can't breastfeed. I was going to bring know. that up because back in the you know Middle Ages, that was a big thing, a market for it. What kind of a market is it nowadays? Well, now everybody thinks like, oh, that's gross, but it's not any more gross than drinking cow tit milk mm. or any other tit milk. It's yeah. it's all tit milk. It all is tit milk. all milk. <laughs> it's is of a tit unless it's soy milk. Unless it's soy or almond. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, but is that truly milk? But then it's definitely not milk. I mean, it says Protein. it right on the thing. It says soy milk. I wonder if you know Spanish. the difference. Like, if someone <laughs> handed you a glass of ice-cold breast milk versus ice-cold cow milk, you know. I've heard that breast milk is sweeter. Yeah? I don't know that for sure, but... I, I've never tried it. I mean, mm-hmm. I guess I did when I was really young. Yeah, I'm really sure I did when young. I was kid, but not since then. Mm-hmm. And do they homogenize and pasteurize and all of those things? And, I mean, does it vary woman to woman? Like, I eat a lot of shit. <laughs> Like, Ooh, you know, gross. Well, not, not <laughs> shit, but like your milk, you know, breast milk must taste like shit. I don't know. I've never, mm. you know, had any to my knowledge. But like, I eat a lot of Cheetos and pizza and basic garbage. Mm-hmm. So, like, my, would mine be worse than like a lady who's, you know, like I live the fit life. I do Pilates. I hope it comes out orange for you if you're eating mm-hmm. that much Cheetos. Like, <laughs> I <laughs> hope you're getting orange milk. Well, that'd actually be a really messed up Cheeto commercial. You know they do those messed up Cheeto commercials where it's always like yeah. something kind of weird or something kind of devious. You've just got like a kid breastfeeding and he turns over and his mouth's covered in powder. Just, just yeah. covered with orange powder. <laughs> weird. Yeah, right? Cheetos, contact Cheetos, us about this. Like, yeah, yeah if, if, if Cheetos wants to sell in Europe, we've got a commercial for you. Kate, you're the only girl here, so... We'll hire somebody. Don't worry. <laughs> you're, just, you're in the you're in our talent pool. We're not gonna whore you out like that. <laughs> there are other whores for that. Jason Martin, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd do it. But I don't have I know the you facilities. Would. Uh but if you wanna like get a, some kind of a rig or something, mm-hmm. it would make it even more gross. <laughs> so. Let's do that. Yeah. All right. I'm not selling anything edible. <laughs> <laughs> Gross. So So I have just one more reason on my list of reasons to want to move to Seattle now. Is it breast milk related? <laughs> not at all. Oh. No. <laughs> Although no, no, not at all. Um so Amazon just opened the um first of hopefully many uh new smart stores called Amazon Go. I've mm-hmm. heard about and, it. Yeah, Dave and I have talked a little bit about it and I was really excited because it's been in um in testing, I guess, and the prototype phase for about four years now. Uh, I've been keeping up with it just because it, it intrigued me. So for those of you who don't know, the whole premise of the Amazon Go store is that you don't have to wait in lines. It's supposed to just be uber convenient and streamlined. Um, you basically go in with your smartphone and you scan a QR code via this app as you come in, similar to how you would for like a bus pass or whatnot. And the app keeps a running total of items that you are putting in your cart. And you are not charged for those items until you leave the store. And then they are just billed to you and your Amazon card on file. So you have to have an Amazon account, obviously, to go to this store. And I was so excited because they just opened it to the general public on Monday. So today I got online and I started (laughs) doing some research, you know, trying to figure out, um, you know, how people are responding to it. And all I saw in the pictures of the storefront were just lines. (laughs) Like, there was a line going around the building. People just want to get their groceries at this one store. But it's hilarious because the whole premise Mm -hmm. of the Amazon store was to to expedite. It's to expedite and no lines. So people were waiting in a line to experience no lines. Mm -hmm. Yep. Queuing up for queue free an environment. Yeah. (laughs) Yep. Well, I mean, that's but that's just because it's new. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure it's, that'll... It's new. People are talking about it. It's a trend. It's a buzz or whatever. In like four or five months, I'm sure it'll be working just the way it's supposed to. And it'll be just to. a regular store. And if there's multiple stores, you know, yeah. they don't have one location to go to and that's it. Yeah. So no. far, it's just the Seattle location. Mm-hmm. But we'll see. I'm sure, you know... And I wonder if Amazon will sell this idea, too, or if it's just going to specifically be like, oh, this is Amazon property, Amazon's idea. 
um, or if this will just become a regular thing at like your local Walmart or your Kroger or I'm sure they'll do whatever. some kind of franchise for it. And, and why I'm, not? And I doubt that they could really have like a copy. They'd have a copyright on their specific tech and and their specific point of sale. Uh, you know, um, computer program. But uh, Sorry. <laughs> but I feel like. Um, you can't really put a copyright on like just the idea itself of a of a line free automated shopping experience. Yeah. So I guarantee you, after its success, others will begin to come into the free market and be like, "Here's our version." But it probably won't stand up to Amazon just because Amazon Amazon has so Amazon. much. <laughs> Amazon has so much distribution capability. Yeah. Sure, yeah. they're just a they massive company at this throw point. Throw enough money at it to where they can corner it. Yeah. Do what Walmart a... used to do in the early 90s and just put everybody out of business yeah. Yeah. by offering such great deals that like you can't compete. And they'll even be willing to take a loss just to drive people out of the mm -hmm. market so that that way they can then just put it back up. On the, yeah, on the regular price that they can make money off of. <clears throat> well, they've just expanded so much. In fact, I read the other day that they, um, when they bought out Whole Foods, it was a thirteen point seven billion dollar purchase for them. Mm -hmm. For Walmart or for Amazon? For Amazon for to Amazon. buy out all of Whole Foods. It's just, yeah. just an yeah, unimaginable, they're... unfathomable amount of money to me. But yeah, I think but Whole having... Foods was actually their standard for the model you're discussing. Mm -hmm. I think they were planning on putting that. Amazon Go model into all the Whole Foods. I think you're right. Okay. They haven't um, released a definite yes on that yet, but it, I'm sure it's it up makes for the discussion. most sense, right? It does. Like, yeah. why buy up all these grocery properties when you have this big grocery idea that you've been yeah. working on for four years? Mm -hmm. It's got to be correlated. Yeah, that's yeah. their distributing idea. Mm -hmm. We need property to get this off, and there you go. Yeah. Not, not only has the company grown so much, but apparently there's CEO is now the like the the most wealthiest man in the world. Oh wow! He's, mm -hmm. Yeah, like more than Bill Gates hmm. at this point. Like he's exceeded everybody. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. And then apparently he was giving money away to somebody for scholarships. I mean, if you're the wealthiest man in the world, like you should give money away to a lot of people. To a lot of Very people, literally. yeah, because you can't spend it all. There's no I mean, way. You can't you know, take like, it with you. I mean, either. once you're number one, right? Because the only point, like, when you're in, like, the top hundred wealthiest people, the yeah. only the only reason to even continue to make money is to just try and usurp yeah. other people <laughs> and get to that one spot. So I once you're up there, you ought to just be like, I made it. I'm the champion. I got the belt. Take some pictures. Boom. Human being, number one. <laughs> <laughs> And then you just give the rest of it away. Yeah. Just give it all away, right? I think I would try to get it all in cash and then uh, make my own money bin, like Scrooge McDuck. Mm. So you like dive just, through it? Yeah, it just slow. see like how much... I would love to... I, I can't remember how much he's worth, but it's like in the billions. Mm -hmm. I would love to see how much that is in physical currency. You know? I wonder if we actually have that much physical currency in America. Or if it's all just computerized. Yeah, I'm sure we do. You think? In... in I don't know, yeah. I, I mean, if know. you think about every human being and the amount of cash that they have on them, plus the United States Treasury and what they're printing every day, plus every single bank in the United States. And you at least come up with maybe one billion. I believe so. It wouldn't maybe. be all like, you know, hundreds or nothing maybe, but... Right. Yeah, I mean, you might not have like one billion two dollar bills or whatever <laughs> well, yeah, to get. I'm, I'm saying like... like you took I don't, all the money, all the cash. Yeah. Would it add it up to the 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 amassed wealth of the wealthiest person in the world in American currency? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Mm -hmm. it's something to think about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, I'd like to know. But mm -hmm. odds are, the wealthiest like person it. in the world in isn't just account. wealthy on American currency. They're probably diversified all over. Well, I'm the sure. But this, oh, is, yeah. this was his wealth was calculated in American dollars. Yeah. Right. And so that's what I'm talking about. Because we wouldn't really understand the correlation. Yeah, if he's it were he's in got the this end. much American dollars, and then this much British, and then he's got <laughs> yeah. some Australia. They just did the math for us. Yeah. <laughs> the conversion. And I'm rates. sure it's an approximation, because I guarantee you he's got yeah, hidden I, it's bank probably accounts. Probably not down to the penny or anything. Yeah, Forbes but. didn't have access to. Mm -hmm. Now, I have heard something about Apple, and I know uh, I was kind of hoping Justin would be here, because yep. I know that's his, his love. He yeah. loves the apps. 
Um, but I heard that they are pulling all of their overseas uh, work, like all of their um, factories and stuff like that, and they're bringing like all of that back to America, and they're paying like some kind of a repatriatization tax. Really? To like become an American company or based company or iconic company or something. They're paying like a five billion dollar repatriate tax or something. That's weird. That is weird. Why would why would he get charged to bring jobs back to America by America? Um, well I th- I th- I'm actually whatever. not really sure. Mm. Um I because isn't that kind of what we need right now? Is more jobs? Yeah, <laughs> apparently. I mean, my guess is is that somehow or another they must have screwed something up at mm-hmm. some point and like lost a, a contract or lost some sort of legal ability. You know, maybe if you have a certain percentage of your wealth mm-hmm. as a corporation leaves the United States, maybe you're no longer considered an American company. Maybe you get categorized into something else and you may have to pay a a bigger tax or something to sell your goods in America. And so maybe they've just decided like, we'll go ahead and pay this big amount now to repatriatize ourselves. And that way later on, because we're, we're looking at the 50 year plan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We'll make all that money back in reductions to I'm sure they will make all our money primary back. market. Why, why else would they do it? Yeah. You know, obviously they're smarter people than we are. <laughs> Either that or <laughs> they, they just like, they owe Trump a big favor or yeah. something. You know, maybe Trump got somebody out of trouble with the uh, Russians. Son of a bitch. Did you break it quick? Quit breaking it. <laughs> You're going to have a lot of work. I am, I know. On this, this episode. It's going to be in and out, in and out. Just like service all this equipment, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. I wonder what could be, what could be doing with that. I mean, um, by now, legitimately, we should have started a, uh, a Patreon account, and we should have started replacing a lot of this. Yeah. Because we've, we've had it for over a year now, and it's always kind of given us some issues, like, throughout the yeah. recordings. So. It's time. It's time, guys. We need donations. American dream. We can't. We can't keep pleasing the people with this kind of this kind of antiquated technology. <laughs> I'm talking into a Dixie cup over here. <laughs> <clears throat> it looks like um, they're having to pay this repatriation tax because they had 252 billion dollars stashed overseas in an ev- effort to avoid. The thirty-five percent tax rate increase. Okay. So oh, this okay. is so just... yeah, they were trying to get away with something, and and then I guess to get themselves back into not getting uh, taxed for all their products selling here in America, they decided to just go ahead and own it up. Yeah, kind of, kind of like an income tax. You made all that money overseas. You want to bring it's it back? Like cool. You got to pay taxes on it now. Yeah. And maybe yeah. it'll it'll. And here's your flat rate. For what would it say, two hundred and fifty-two billion? Yeah, and it looks like they've made a promise to pay thirty-eight billion dollars in taxes, and that's the largest tax contribution of its kind. Hmm. So, but maybe it'll show the way for other companies that are also surreptitiously hiding funds and resources yeah. overseas, and hmm. and still taking tax breaks and stuff that they shouldn't. Mm-hmm. Um, and it looks like they've made some promises to build on the American economy. So I think that's more or less uh, what the issue was, it sounds like, is they've been given um, crap for not revitalizing the economy. Mm-hmm. For taking American yeah. dollars for their and, product and, and, and hiding it overseas. It to, yeah. you know, <clears throat> yeah, which man. does happen a lot, unfortunately. Yeah. You know, We have these big companies that we all throw our money into and support, and um, a lot of times they just do they stash it overseas or whatever instead of putting that back into the economy and helping us grow and sustain right because generally uh, corporations objectives aren't to you know uplift the people it's to uplift Mm -hmm. the corporation Mm -hmm. and show that it's uh properly 
making money because all of its investors need to increase their portfolios off of it, or otherwise they pull all of their investments. And go it's somewhere expensive else to, to hire that's, specialized that's, American yeah. employees. That's capitalism for you. You know, that's if you can yeah. get the same labor over in another country for a lot less, for a lot yeah. less. Mm-hmm then your investors are going to make more money off of it, so everyone's going to be on board. The same materials for a lot less. Yeah. So it's funny when you think of the people who are like, we need to have an American job, blah, 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 and then that it's you know capitalism and American jobs. Mm-hmm. Well, that doesn't necessarily correlate yeah. in, this, in this sense. Yeah, it's not, so. a, yeah, it's not a p- perfect form by yeah. any means. But, hey, if you get a bunch more high-tech jobs, you know, middle-tech jobs, mm-hmm. then... People won't have to go to fast food places, make seven twenty five an hour with a decent education. Yeah. You know, those good jobs came back. Cool, mm-hmm. they can have those jobs and the teenagers can have the yeah. minimum wage jobs again. Well, I think the issue is to you know, we've there is such a huge uh, difference between the already developed nations and the developing nations mm-hmm. and what their costs of living represent. And so like, you know, in in Indochina and places like that, like they have their children working. You know, they have these huge families and like half of their kids are working uh, and they are dependent on that income. Yeah, yeah, they're making $3 an hour, but that $3 an hour means so much more yeah, to that family. And it goes yeah. a lot farther to that family. And, and they... You know, they need all of those sources of income to build up the whole family. And Mm -hmm. then everyone in their village is also doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to uplift their entire community uh, by, like, getting clean water and and constant power to their homes and stuff like that. Things that we don't really even consider. So, So you think about it like, yeah, they're, every time we say, you know, don't, sell these jobs overseas like it's kind of us as a developed nation that holds down these developing nations and keeps them from being able to come up because we use them so we need to just unite the world's labor force and just create like a minimum a global minimum wage and once you do that then there won't be any point to sell your labor force overseas to this place or to that place because all workers get a standard, a global standard of living. I've said things like this before, but we're, we're getting to the point of you can't just focus on one country anymore. You have to think about things globally mm-hmm. and, and not just environmentally, but, but fiscally. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, it's getting to the point where because everybody's hand is in everybody's pockets in all these different places you you have to build each other up in that sense mm-hmm. and uh it, that actually goes it goes more self-serving for myself because what that means is a more 24 7 world and then uh maybe i can get some real food at 4 a.m when i'm awake <laughs> is where that all comes back for me yeah <laughs> I, but, but it, it's true like we we're 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 becoming more a more globalized society and, you know, business is done around the world all the time. And why the hell can't I get a good meal at 3 in the morning? We'll get you there, Dave. You don't like Waffle House? <laughs> a good meal. You know, you know, so you don't like Waffle House? <laughs> but I, my only option shouldn't be Waffle House and McDonald's. No. My option should never be McDonald's, for one. Well, you do have a third option of buying groceries and making your own food at home. At 4 a.m. At 4 a.m. Um, my kitchen's not open that early. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get you there, Dave. <laughs> but, but, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I mean, people are still going to sleep when the sun is down, for mm-hmm. the most part. Like, And businesses are going to close when it's not conducive to business. Mm-hmm. Like, if, nope. If, Everybody's if, open all the if time. <laughs> Dave, if Dave is the only person ordering... <coughs> You know my gourmet food at four in the morning. I'm gonna go to bed and screw Dave over. Oh. Like, I'm sorry. Like I can't keep a hundred dollar an hour kitchen running off of your twenty dollars an hour. Like I need a hundred and fifty dollars to keep that hundred dollar kitchen. You're going. selfish. 
I am a capitalist. <laughs> but I don't believe that we should use the impoverished to uplift ourselves. And I don't think that we should steal resources to uplift ourselves. Like, And I realize that that means that I would be cutting out a lot of amenities out of my life if America just decided to like, hey, let's actually be the good guys. Yeah. And yeah. like, let's really change this place for the better. If we did that, we'd have to give up a lot of Creature comforts. A lot of our oh, yeah. creature comforts, what it kind of means to be an American. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, but I think that would be good for us, you know? Yeah. As, I'm kind of an asshole, as, though, so <laughs> also, you know. As like, a country and even as go a without race of human month. beings, being mm -hmm. able to do things for yourself and do things for your neighbor yeah. is, you know, kind of what we're, you know, supposed to be doing. Mm-hmm. Supposed to. Yeah, supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> Try to. <laughs> but, you know, the, the community has definitely gone from local to internet. Mm -hmm. Oh, know? definitely. Like, community is, is work and it is online. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, where you have to be. Like, you have to be at work to pay your bills. And so there's a community there that, like, you can't really escape, so you might as well make the best of. Mm-hmm. And then you get home and, you know, back in the 70s and the 80s and probably time periods before the 70s and the 80s, you know, they would have these parties like, you know, just picnic parties on Saturdays where everybody in a neighborhood would just go meet at yeah. one person's house and they'd have like a barbecue and, and, you know, the next month some other house would host it and mm. everybody knew each other and... Yeah. And now it's just yeah, how many how many of your neighbors' names do you know? That's a great point. The world has gotten so much smaller, but everyone's yard has gotten so much bigger. Yeah. You know, no, I'm not gonna go over to my neighbor's house. That's so far away. I can just be at, at home on the internet. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about that the other day. Like I've lived here now for two, three months. I don't know our neighbors. Do you know yeah. your neighbor? Nope. No, no idea. I was also thinking. I read this article about how, in some ways, social media makes your world smaller. And that you don't really, I mean, think about like, okay, um, do you still know any of the people you went to fifth grade with? Yes. Okay. Couple. But. Like, do I hang out with them? No. The no. only reason I know them is because of social, social media, media. Has, has kept me in touch with, and it's only one. But before that, before social media, because, you know, you're old enough in years that you remember probably being an adult before Facebook. I don't. I have no memories of being an adult before social media, mm -hmm. being a millennial. I, I've grown up with this since age 12 onward. So I don't have that experience of just letting people go. Yeah. I mean, if I'm sure if I wanted to, I could pull out an elementary school yearbook and find all of those people, but that's not the way the world used to be. Mm -hmm. So you have all these ties in your life that you would have previously cut out and gotten rid of. Mm -hmm that you don't necessarily anymore unless you're actively deleting people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah there's, so. you know, every now and again, I'll think of a couple of friends. Hey, I wonder what that guy's up to. They're not on social media. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. 20 years goes by and still yeah. don't know what's up with that dude. I mean, there's there's people I went, I, I've known since first grade that live within 50 miles of me that mm -hmm. I do not see mm -hmm. and I don't really talk to. Mm -hmm. Um. And that's kind of sad thinking about that. <laughs> <laughs> but back at your at your parents' house, right? Your parents still live in the same house that they, you grew up in. They live or? across the street from mm -hmm. that house in my grandparents' house. Do you know the names of the people that live next to them? Uh, the last names. I know a few of them. Yeah. I mean, what about you? Where you where you grew up and your parents lived? Like, do you know the names of the people that are around that house? Well, my mom and I moved around a lot, so that was never really, like, an opportunity I had. But my, I lived with my grandparents a good bit, too, and my grandmother absolutely does. We live, we come from a really small town. It's called Air, Massachusetts. I know everybody there. They know me. Um, my grandmother's on pretty much, like, a first-name basis. She's pretty much almost famous throughout the mm -hmm. town because my grandfather built all the roads or built all the houses on this road and has one named after him, so it's kind of a... So what what about you? Where where you grew up? Like we actually yeah I'd, stay where you grew up, mm -hmm. and I guess you don't 
any longer because they've all moved I off. I could probably give you 12 names from the 80s mm. from people who used to live there. I don't know if they still do or not. If <laughs> some do, some don't, but yeah. no. Yeah. See, we, we got our place. Uh, my parents got my family home back in the 80s, and, and I know the, the names of every family that has an adjacent lot to us. But then again, all of them, all of those families all bought, you know, within about a 10 year span of time. And they've always kept their home. Like, mm -hmm. so, you know, we had got introduced to them back in like 1991 or whatever, right. and they've never moved away. Mm -hmm. But nowadays it's just like the new generations, they don't, yeah. You know, maybe you'll catch a wave every now and then, like, oh, I recognize that vehicle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But now, one one of the people that my parents do live next door to is, and this is the reason that I've always remembered them is because they're a Darden. Um, it's the widow of one of the original Dardens that started the Darden Corporation. That, oh, okay. That has like with uh, Olive oh, Reeves and Olive Garden mm -hmm. and all the, and oh, Red Lobster and stuff like that. Oh, they got rid of Red Lobster. Yeah, Red Lobster is now their own thing. I think. Oh, is it? Yeah. 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 I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. I haven't looked into that it. That makes sense though, because they had down there it was a it was like a combination Olive Garden Red Lobster, and now it's only one of those. I don't know which one. Oh yeah, but yeah, I don't know how it worked either. I never got to go go down there when it was like that. Italian. Yeah, was it a place, split it was, kitchen? I have no idea. It seems like that'd be kind of hmm. like you got a lot of fish stuff going on over here, a lot of pasta, pasta here, stuff yeah. over here, and then where pasta and fish come together. <laughs> you get lobster That's the ravioli. Happens. That's where the party beautiful. happens. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Come on. Yeah, it's, I don't know, man. It's it's a crazy world that we've built for ourselves mm -hmm. and that, you know, and that we all complain about in one way or another, but, like, we're all kind of responsible for... Mm -hmm how the world is you know all the new people blame how all the old people were racist and <laughs> made all these horrible decisions and all yeah. the old people blame all these new people for how you know everything's going downhill because they all have anxiety about going to the damn grocery store or like the mail you know like don't talk to the mailman he might rape you like mm -hmm. well I'm just saying, sorry, mailman. In, in case you're not a rapist, I actually knew my mailman growing up. He would he would uh, give candy to all the kids. Yeah, and then oh. and then years later, like a few years later, uh, he started working for a hardware store that a friend of mine worked at. So I actually really got to know him there, and he was not a rapist. Um, good, good, or at least nice for guy. you. Yeah, he he actually wasn't that nice a guy. He was a fucking asshole. <laughs> But he was always cool with the kids. He was like, yeah, have some candy. I don't give a shit, whatever. Yeah, go away. <laughs> <laughs> go away, kid. You're bothering me. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm just saying that, like, you know, there's there's so much. There is a big gap, I feel like. And, and I feel like the Internet has definitely broadened that gap. Mm -hmm. um, for in good and ways, for bad. Yeah. For good, thanks, Internet. Yeah. <laughs> for, for good and for bad. <laughs> but that's kind of the way of, like, every single big leap forward in mm. our history like there's always a a negative side to it and a positive side mm -hmm. like sure we have you know all these better roads and stuff but who knows how many types of animals or trees died off when yeah. you know all these roads got built right? yeah <clears throat> you just never know and sure we have 12 grades now we used to only have 11 now kids aren't getting into the workforce fast enough so that's something my grandfather used to say. Oh, really? I never yeah. realized there was 11th grade. Yeah, when, when my grandfather was growing up, they it only went to 11th grade. Huh. And they added a 12th grade at some point. And then it caused this short break of, like, people getting into the workforce. Yeah. After high school. Yeah. Another additional year. Mm -hmm. Additional year before you got into college and became yeah. skilled labor or educated labor. Mm -hmm. Georgia being in an agro state, um, we actually had farmer's laws for the longest oh, yeah. time where... Like at age twelve, you could take your child out of school mm -hmm. without any kind of truancy issues because you need them to work the family farm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and that would be that's an experience in itself. Like, yeah, you you get behind on some things like culture and language and history and <laughs> things like that. I, but and... I wonder how much more homeschooling there is, and when you get closer to the city. 
because I hear about it all the time around mm -hmm. here. You know, I kind of grew up in a rural part of Georgia, and there was plenty of people that were being homeschooled. Really? Yeah. Hmm. I didn't really well, know that many. Dave was home church. I was on church oh, at one yeah. point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a new level. Uh, that's I had, that's I've heard of Georgia. home school. This is the first guy I've known that's been home church. So. And that's exclusive to you, Dave. Yeah, me and my brother and sister. And oh, you guys were homeschooled? No, we home were home church. Well, uh, did you go to a public? Yeah, we went to public school, school and oh, okay. stuff. Yeah, but yeah. like I I told this story about a couple weeks ago, yeah. and it, basically it was. Um, uh, growing up, my in the town we were in at the time, there wasn't a church that my parents found to be good enough for them, I guess. And so, taught it to you at home. Yeah, or whatever. they would they would we would have church with the family, and then a couple like neighbors and stuff would come over. And, okay, but yeah. rather than just like a Bible study session, which mm -hmm. I've heard of this plenty, of, like Dad actually yeah. got up in front of the family mm -hmm. and, and like and did some preach. and did some yeah. preaching. Okay. Yeah. And if I had a family, I, I feel like. I'd be right up my alley. Yeah. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like that's something I would do too, except I wouldn't be preaching the good word or the Bible or anything and just be whatever like BS I came up with that day and decided, <laughs> like you know, whatever, was self important enough. Whatever everybody needs to know about. I would just get yeah. up real early Sunday morning and look through all like the internet memes for like something that was heartwarming and be like, all right, this is what I'm going to preach today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This guy cut me off. Know thy neighbor. That's actually what I am preaching today. Yeah, think about it. It's not that bad an idea because, I mean, we, we talk about people don't know their neighbors. Like, people don't know their families that much yeah. anymore. Like, kids are on their, you know, kids and parents are just on their phones, on their tablets, all, you know, watching TV and stuff. And they're not, you don't see the traditional everybody sit down at the table and eat and talk. Oh. Human, as much to human anymore. interaction. Yeah. yeah. Um, I realized, I think, during Christmas how very little my family actually yeah. knew about me and me them. Like, we just were both, like, I think uh, my dad got me, like, I want to say, I don't remember what the artist was, like a Jennifer Lopez CD. She's like, you, you oh. listen to this, right? I'm like, first of all, this is a CD. <laughs> <laughs> no one uses this anymore. Second of all, I have a no. Very good CD collection. Put that so in my <laughs> Sony Discman. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I, I, you know, going back home for the holidays and stuff, for the big meal, my, my sister and her husband came over and we all sat down at the table and we talked to each other. Mm -hmm. But like, when it's just like, oh, we're having breakfast. Here's the table. There's the TV. It's on. We're mm -hmm. watching it. Mm -hmm. Like on the phone. Yeah. Yeah. So. But there was yeah. still probably like one entertainment system in your home. Like, did you grow up in a multi TV home right. where. Oh, okay, I yeah. I didn't mm -hmm. like until I was probably like thirteen or fourteen. We just had one TV in the living room. I, I, I shall say that it, sooner it for was me. it I was it wasn't my entire growing up, but it was it was by like age nine or ten. I had a room with a TV and my Nintendo hooked up to it and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. like, um, I, I I didn't actually have like. I had an Atari, but it was hooked up to the regular mm -hmm. TV, and of course, I was only allowed to play during certain times when the parents didn't want to watch TV. Right. Mm -hmm. I have to be honest, being the millennial I am, I had a TV in my room from like age two. Mm. And my mom was very much one of those parents who was like, you know what, go outside, watch TV, read a book, whatever, just leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we just don't we, be here. We had to get out of the house at certain yeah. times. Yeah. That was a thing for my mom. Get out, ride your bike. During the summer, she's yeah. like, if it's not Use raining, it. you're outside. Yeah. During winter break, if it's, uh, it can be raining, whatever, it's just going to turn to snow, you're outside. Yeah. Yeah. Now, even even though on. I did have a TV, I did go outside and I played, you know, I went outside and played with my dog or I went swimming yeah. or I went down to the creek, which is something you can say in the South. Mm -hmm. And I would ride my bike over to my friend's place and we'd do stuff, you mm -hmm. know. But Kids don't really do that anymore either. That's, they kind of don't. That's kind of die. My, my neighborhood, fake it of kids. You'll see them like walk from the school bus to their house, and that's the and only they're on their time. phone the whole time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. the only time you ever see them. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah I, I used to get lost in the woods mm -hmm. as oh, a yeah. kid, like on purpose. We like, had just... rock fights. Oh yeah, <laughs> we built forts. Yeah, mm -hmm. we blazed trails through those woods, man. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to come inside. I remember when I heard my mom, and she was like, "We're well, five more minutes," and she'd be like, "Get your ass!" And you'd be like, five mm -hmm. more minutes." No, there's no arguing. I think about it now, though, and what. What could if she have really? She couldn't have yell. caught me. <laughs> <laughs> I 
But when your dick came you, out. Yeah, you got to yeah. come home eventually. Yeah. That's what she knows. Like, if this food is cold, when you come home. And you're eating it anyway. You're going to eat it, and I'm going to laugh maniacally the whole time. Because yeah. we're serving eggs, and those suck cold. <laughs> That's true. We don't have a microwave. Uh, everybody had a microwave. Yeah, microwave. microwave technology. That's like 60s, I think. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I hear that supposedly microwaves cause cancer if you heat your food in them. They do not. I don't know. That's I didn't think it was that tree. No. true. I didn't mm. think that was true. No. I didn't think that there, was true. But there, even if it was, I'm lazy yeah. enough to be like, meh, I'm going to die of something anyway. There are <laughs> Might as well be types microwave of cancer. That can cause cancer, but we don't use those in everyday life. <laughs> yeah. That's just how that is. You can I look know, that up. I know please, high exposure please to... Please do your research. ...to x-rays. That's why they always put the, the lead on lead you. Stuff, yep. yeah. mm-hmm. and, uh, and, and that's still pregnant, like... Right? The, yeah. That's like the lowest level... Yeah, you would of, have to actually radiation like... ...radiation that will affect you. Mm-hmm. It would have to be like an hour of exposure, I feel like, for it to really like... Do oh, you're, you're developing you know, cellular mutation yeah. that's going to create cancer. Yeah, yeah, and that's why x-rays take a second. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Click. <laughs> that's exactly. That's all it is. Yeah. I and you still put today. the lead jacket yeah. on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, ra- radiation in your microwave is not good. Like, it's, don't put your face in it. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's <laughs> yeah. If you waves. feel the water molecules in your body exciting, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you should step away from yeah. that microwave. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's plenty of radio waves that you know we're being exposed to right now. Yeah. Maybe not as intense <laughs> as inside of a microwave, but radiation's all around you yeah. all the time from the sun. And so, mm-hmm. yeah, love this thing. Uh, <laughs> radi- yeah, ah! radiation all the time from your cell phone, yeah. from TV, from radio. Mm-hmm. Like, it's always there. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't affect you. Yeah. Or it does, just way later on in life. Yeah, sure. <laughs> it's beautiful to see the things people come up with. Like yeah. If I hear one more person talk about vaccinations. I was saying something uh, just last night where uh, there are people on Facebook, and it really pisses me off when this happens, where... They just post a thing, and it's like, the ingredients in this food causes cancer. And I do a real quick, just a cursory Google search, like, no, it doesn't, and here's all the proof that says it doesn't. Mm. Like, why are you sharing this bullshit that you clearly didn't even bother looking up? Yeah. Because it... They uh, believe it. It reinforces their opinion yeah. without them having to do the research necessary to truly reinforce their opinion. Mm. Which is terrible. Yeah, I, yeah. I have... Of a family member that I I love I love him to death, uh, but he's constantly he's very uh, right wing mm-hmm. and and for certain reasons I get it like I respect uh, the right to bear arms mm-hmm. I 100 percent respect that uh, and there are certain right wing things certain conservative policies that I very much agree with but he goes over the top mm-hmm. like on the Facebook posts he'll post anything and everything that slams one side and lifts his side up and he never ever does the research yeah. like like you were saying like you can five seconds of like is this true no 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 yes it is god damn it no 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 all right it's probably not true because yeah. this is the actual this is the author of that article who wrote yes it is god yeah. damn it so <laughs> So, you know, it's it doesn't take long to yeah. research. And it's sad that we have to do that. Yeah. That, that the internet has created not only the world's historically most vast uh, wealth of information that we nearly all have access to this. At, at, at this point in time, I think over 50% of the humans on Earth have access to the internet now. Yeah. Oh, it's just uh, a cesspool of inaccuracies. You know, but that's the thing is yeah. that like there is almost as much disinformation mm-hmm. that gets spread through this yeah. giant resource as there is pure fact. Yeah. And I I can't imagine that was what was intended upon its release. Everybody was thinking about all the glorious things like, oh, all the children will have any any textbook that they need, yeah. any literature, anything that they need to do research on within seconds, they'll have it at their fingertips. Mm-hmm. But now you actually have to wade through all, you're still doing the same research. Yeah. Like it's just like going to the library and looking up all these different things that, that go towards your opinion. 
Now you have to do that because there's so much misinformation that you have to go through and research whether the thing you actually just pulled is the truth right. or if it's somebody's joke or if it's just somebody else got lied to. Or There's so many ways for you to corrupt the information. Yeah. And all it takes is you know the internet for it to spread rapidly like wildfire. And now you have to correct a million people that think that you can die from eating a snail butt. <laughs> snail butt. <laughs> well, so today I learned that uh, staring at Jason's face for an hour does not fix the pain in my mouth. Has it been an hour, really? Yeah. Right. Holy crap. Yeah. What'd you learn today? Uh, snail butts. Yeah. Mm. We learned that a couple weeks ago. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I learned that today. Oh. Well. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Kate, what did um, you learn today? Yeah. I didn't learn anything. I just preached. <laughs> <laughs> uh, House preach. Uh, Nothing? The, I today. The, the apple thing? Ooh, yeah. You, did, you, did you didn't learn, You learned that today. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, just, I learned I that today. To well, she, she looked it oh, up. Oh, the apple thing. I'm thinking the Amazon thing. Yes, no. the apple thing you learned yeah. today. Yeah. The repatriotization <laughs> of yeah. the, uh, apple. the apple products. Yep. Scott, what did you learn? I'm going with what I just said. Snail butts? Snail butts. All right. I technically <laughs> did learn about uh, Amazon Go. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I knew that that was something they were working on, but I didn't know what they were titling their their grocery stores, yeah. and uh, and I didn't realize that they had opened Open. the first one. Mm -hmm. Well, for information on everything we talked about today, do your own fucking research. <laughs> yeah, because we might have just lied to you. The whole show <laughs> might have been false. We, we might, might have not to even do know it. Like that. <laughs> Just like making shit up. People are like, is that true? I heard it on Talkie Box. Talkie, talkie Box Snow. Oh, I really love that idea. Yeah. Who knows when it's going to happen? Anyway. So, I, so get this. In Japan, they're, <laughs> they're eating pinkies. Yeah? yeah? Off of babies. Well, dead babies. Yeah. I mean, not like they're not yeah. cutting them off of regular so living like, babies. Just the dead ones. Anyone that, uh, like SIDS or anything Still like birth. that. Those Still birth. Still birth. Yeah. They, they're taking the pinkies. They're putting them into a little jar. Uh, they shake them up. Them. They yeah. they bury Pickle. them. I think for like six weeks, like mm -hmm. kimchi. Mm -hmm. uh, take them out and then suck on them. Hmm. Couldn't do it. All right, do good your night, own research. Everybody. <laughs> do your research. <laughs>